How do you keep your family healthy this season when it feels like everyone around you is getting sick? I use Sambacol. It's drug-free and scientifically tested to help support your immunity. Sambacol has the power of black elderberry in every purple bottle. It comes in tablets, syrup, chewables, or my kids' favorite, the great-tasting gummies. So this cold and flu season, support your family's immunity with Sambacol Black Elderberry. It's the only one I trust for my family. And best of all, my kids love it too. Back here on the Bernie and Sid Show. Heard everywhere on the 77 WABC app. And on the line with us right now, as he does every week on Thursdays, we're honored to have a man whose website, by the way, BillOReilly.com, is amazing. You learn everything you need to know, folks, right there. Also, the United States of Trump, the book is there. You can get that. And uh, we're going to join Mr. O'Reilly, Big Bad Bill O'Reilly, at the Paramount Theater in Huntington Sunday night. So cool. It's going to be fun. A lot of fun. Good morning to you, Bill. Boy, you just scared everybody. Big, bad Bill O'Reilly. It's like Leroy Brown, right? (laughs) Hey, listen, that's you. I thought the Bill I know. Like it or not. No, I know. All right. I got my show in Huntington all uh, wrapped up. You guys are going to be asking me the Q&A at the second half of the show. Um, It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be serious and funny. Um, because there are things that, that are, you know, annoying me and disturbing me about the country right now. We're going to get um, that out there, but then we're going to have a few laughs as well. Well, let's start with that, then. If, if there are a lot of things, Bill, that are really annoying you about the country, and thank yeah. God Bernie and Sid are not two of those, um, let, why don't you give us, without giving away too much that you'll do on Sunday night, the thing that this morning, right now at 840 on this day, is annoying you the most? Well, there were two things I took away from uh, yesterday's news cycle, Um, and I'm a contrarian because uh, nobody else uh, that I saw seems to agree with me on this. But you got a guy down there uh, in Washington testifying to the world, not just to the country, to the world. All right, so Michael Horowitz is the inspector general of the Justice Department, a very, very important job. All right, he's got to keep the uh, apparatus that arrests people in this country. He's got to keep them honest. That's his job. All right, just him. So he gets up there and he testifies in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee and he will not say to the world what is true. That this was not an accident. That these 17 mistakes the FBI made in getting surveillance warrants on the Trump campaign did not happen because of incompetence. They happened because there was a contrived effort to remove a president of the United States. He knows that. Horowitz knows it. So he, but he uses weasel words like, well, there was enough evidence, um, we found enough evidence and no bias in starting the investigation. Okay, that's fine. And I don't, I don't dispute that. But then when you see that the primary source of information, the dossier that contains salacious charges against Trump, was fake, you stop. You stop. You don't keep asking for more warrants. That's corruption. So what Horowitz should have said, if he's a patriot and not CYAing, all right, is, hey, I've been in this business a long time. I've never seen the FBI make mistakes at this level, ever. And to me, as an American, it strains credulity. The fix had to be in. That's all. Just be honest. I'm tired of weasels. Aren't you guys tired Uh, of weasels? uh, Big time, big time. Listen, this guy, Horowitz, by the way, he was an Obama appointee. So thank God for guys like uh, U.S. Attorney Durham and Bill Barr, who will not pull their punches. And we'll get to the bottom of this. These dirty cops, Comey, Brennan, McCabe, all of them. And by the way, they're all white Irish guys like us. But uh, we don't play identity politics, so who cares? You know what? Uh, I'm, you, you just made a really, really good point, Bernie. That Durham and Barr, okay, are now the last line of defense to keep the United States of America honest. But you will see the most vicious attacks on both of those individuals beginning, you know, they've already begun, but where do you see after Christmas how they ramp up? Yes. And, and then this is the second thing that's really bothering me. The press, 
and we've talked about this, and I don't want to be a boring kind of guy, all right? But when NBC News, which runs MSNBC, refuses to broadcast the opening statement by Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Unbelievable. Refuses to broadcast it to the nation. Yet as soon as Dianne Feinstein, the ranking minority member on the committee, the Democrat, comes up, they broadcast that. But no Republican. So NBC News is out of business. They are not a news agency any longer. That's the Today Show, Lester Holt, um, uh, their Meet the Press. They're gone. All right? You can't do that if you're a news agency. Now, if they just want to say, well, we're, we're a Democratic uh, part of the, we're part of the party, Comcast. They own it. We're part of the Democratic Party. Well, at least be honest about it. But, and, but, but again, where is the outrage on that? Where, have you seen that as a topic of discussion? No. 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 It's accepted now. Corruption is accepted. And that is what is bothering me as I sit on Long Island on this Thursday morning. Well, don't let it bother you too much. Life is still great, and we got a big, you got a big show coming up on Sunday night. But not to further your anger here, Bill, you just talked about the FBI, but, you know, you talk about the media and how dishonest they are. And, you know, the impeachment story, just another classic example. I, you, you watch it, and you, you're you saying to yourself, well, you didn't do anything wrong, and, and it may have been silly, and, and I think it was, but certainly nothing illegal. And yet they've got uh, two articles of impeachment, and they're jumping up and down, and they think they've got something here. So the question to you is very simple. What are we missing? Here's what you're missing. This whole thing is connected. So the FBI's investigation of Donald Trump's campaign is connected to his phone call with the Ukrainian president. This is vital to understand, and this goes directly to my book, The United States of Trump, and what I'll be talking about on Sunday night in the Understanding Trump Tour. So Donald Trump, he's a human being. You know, some people will dispute that, and on certain (laughs) days I'll be in that camp, all right? But he's a person. So he wins the greatest victory of his life. He's president. He goes down to Washington, he goes, this is great. Okay, I'm president. And I pulled it off. No one else could have done it. This is Trump's mindset. He walks in. Little does he know that the most powerful law enforcement agency in the world is at the very moment he walks in trying to undermine his presidency. He does not know that. Little by little, it becomes apparent that this is happening because all of these things are being leaked to the corrupt media. The dossier, he did this, the campaign met, his son met with a Russian, and Trump knows none of this is true. He didn't do anything because he was in charge of the campaign. Nobody else, him. So he gets angrier and angrier and angrier, and he becomes obsessed with the unfairness of the situation. Are you with me so far? Yes, we're here. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So then he vows to himself, and he told me this eye to eye, I'm going to expose fake news and what this is all about. I'm going to do it. Because Sessions isn't going to do it, the attorney general he appointed. I'm going to do it. That's what led to the phone call to Ukraine. Do us a favor. Find out what corruption was in your country that impacted on my campaign and election. You right. see yeah. the connection? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He Absolutely. never would have done that in the most overt way that he did, do us a favor, all right, if the FBI hadn't been trying to undermine his campaign from the very beginning and his presidency. No, his frustration is completely justified, understandable. The persecution he's undergone is unprecedented. So every person listening to us right now, whether you like Trump or not, think about your own life and when you have been treated unfairly. Think about that. And how angry and frustrated you get when you cannot stop the unfairness, right? Yeah. That leads to divorce. It leads to fractured friendships. It leads to leaving jobs. It leads to physical conflict sometimes. 
Think about it. Yeah. This is exactly what Trump experienced. So they basically, the strategy is to drive him crazy from the media's point of view. Once Mueller came back and said, I don't have anything, the media went, oh, we're not going to get him there. So now we'll literally drive him crazy, uh, yes. which is what they tried to do. It's and terrible. Still are. Terrible, terrible, terribly unfair. It is, it I, is. I, I say cancel the election. Just give the man another four years because they <laughs> robbed him. They robbed him of his first four years, and he still got a lot done. And uh, they, by the way, these Democrats, uh, Bill O'Reilly, they know. They know that, uh, that the polls are going the other way. People are starting to pick up on the on the on the the, the, the dirty tricks, and they're just a nasty, sneaky, agenda-driven yeah. everything. As a matter of fact, uh, just look at Pelosi. She sat on this. Uh, she sat on this USMCA deal. She knew she had to get something out there to appease people, to pe- appease voters. We're doing something. But she actually sat on that for a year. And that would have helped American farmers, workers. And finally, uh, after a year, she, she agrees to have a vote to ratify the USMCA to do something. Because uh, I think, the, again, the people know and she knows the people know. Well, it's going to be fascinating. We're going to have the best election coverage on BillOReilly.com. I've already aligned it up. Uh, and I want people to, pr- uh, to consider, um, you know, looking in and, and joining us every night for the podcast that I do four nights a week. Because you're not going to get the truth on television news or in the newspapers. You are not going to get it. I think you are right, but I can't prove it. I know that certain Democrats like Schumer, is very worried, very yep. worried that Trump will be reelected. Because, A, you're right, fair-minded Americans know this is wrong on a human level, on a uh, political level, and on a social level for this country. Fair-minded Americans know it's wrong. Absolutely. All right? The second thing is the Democrats don't have anybody. They have, they're flailing around. We have another debate next week, um, but who is going to beat him? Who? Well, you saw the poll earlier in the week out of uh, Harvard, which had uh, Hillary Clinton ahead of Joe Biden. By yeah, 1%. I don't believe any of those polls now. They're all what they call push polls, yeah. um, which uh, on the Internet means activists participate, not regular folks. So I don't believe any of that. But certainly Hillary Clinton would like it, but the Democrats don't want her because they know she'll lose again. She can't win. Um, but Biden, every day, gets in deeper and deeper and deeper. And Biden certainly has no enthusiasm behind him. Um, so the Democrats are very, very worried. And they should be. Good. No question. Well, listen, uh, we are really excited about Sunday night. But really, I mean, it's a huge honor for both of us. And I know the people who are attending, I know a bunch, they're really excited, too. This will be the night of the year, and it comes up this Sunday night in Huntington, Long Island, at the Paramount Theater, Bill O'Reilly, and a bunch of special guests as well. And we want to thank you, A, for the wonderful job you do here every Thursday, and certainly for involving us on Sunday night. It's a big, big deal. Thank you. I just want to make one more point. Uh, I am buying dinner. Oh, okay. but wow! No appetizers. It, it, it just gets better. And BYOB, by the way. All right. Hey, we'll Bill. See you guys Sunday. Thanks for helping me out. Uh, we can't wait. Thank right. you, Bill. A pleasure. Okay. And-